Hi, I'm Ribbons the Clown, and you're watching Ribbons Believe It or Not. Today we're out in the porch, and we're going to talk about the whole armor of God. And the first piece of armor that we're going to cover is the helmet of salvation. Now, salvation doesn't just mean being born again or being saved. Salvation in the original Greek means to be saved, made whole, delivered. Mm, um, let's see all the different words. To be safe, deliver it, keep safe, protect, heal, preserve, do well, and make whole. That's what the original um, Greek means in salvation. Now, when you confess with your mouth, as, like Romans 10, 9 says, confess with your mouth and believe in your heart, you're saved. Um, saved doesn't just mean born again, but it means even deeper than that. A lot of people have a problem with the helmet of salvation because they think they have to feel saved or act saved. Righteousness is who you are when you accept Jesus. It's not your behavior. Holy is your conduct. And holiness has nothing to do with salvation uh, except for the fact that once you are saved, you want to please God and you want to become more holy and more like God. It's not, you don't have to be holy to earn salvation. Salvation is received as a free gift, uh, a free gift Jesus came and bought your salvation through the blood of Jesus. He died. He paid the price for sin. And uh, when you receive Jesus in your heart, you become born again. Because the wages, all of us have come short and fallen short of the glory of God. And the wages of sin is death. But the gift of eternal life is, is life through Christ Jesus. And when you accept that gift, whosoever can accept that gift. And you're a whosoever, I'm a whosoever. Whosoever would receive Jesus, the free gift, is saved or born again and going to heaven when they die. But not only that, um, you have, um, you come into the kingdom of God, the government of God, and you are set on earth to rule and have dominion and authority. And that's another subject. So, um, the helmet of salvation, it, it means you're saved no matter what you feel like, no matter what you've done as long as you ask Jesus in your heart. And of course, when you sin, you want to ask Jesus to forgive you because that locks and prevents you from hearing God and opens the door for the devil to torment you and put trash in your life. Okay, the next thing is the breastplate of righteousness. Now, I go to a lot of different churches and minister on stage as Ribbons to Clown. My husband and me work together and we do the whole armor of God. And I think the breastplate of righteousness is one of the major pieces of armor that people get um, messed up with or want to argue about. The breastplate of righteousness is um, your righteousness. God says that you are righteous. He became sin that you would become the righteousness of God. Like I said um, earlier, righteousness is not earned you don't have right behavior to be righteous. Righteousness is who you are, what God makes you right standing with Him. It means that you can come boldly before the throne of God in a time of need and get what you want. It means that, that, you, that God is your Father. He's not far off in heaven with a pitchfork and hammer hitting you on the head and poking you every time you do something wrong. God is your Father and He behaves like a Father. He loves you, protects you, and provides for you. And you are the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. It's bought and paid for. It's what Jesus did for you to make you in right standing with God. So you can approach God. You can be uh, co-laborers with God. You can have fellowship with God. You no longer, the biggest thing people think is, I'm a worm in the dirt. I'm nothing. I'm nobody. But that's not true. God doesn't make nothing or nobody. When you receive Jesus into your heart, you become someone. You become a king on this earth. And you become a child of God. So you want to put on the breastplate of righteousness. And uh, let's see what else I have here. Um, 2 Corinthians 5.21 says that he was made to be sin for us, that we would become the righteousness of God in him. Uh, Ephesians 2.9 says, By grace you're saved through faith and not of yourself. It's the gift of God, least any man should boast. Uh, righteousness is what God uses to rule his kingdom. Hebrews 1, 8, a scepter of righteousness is the scepter of your kingdom. And you are the scepter of righteousness. You are what God uses to rule his kingdom on earth. The kingdom of God is in you. The power, authority, government, and rule of God on earth is in you. Romans 4, 17 says, the kingdom of God is righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Spirit. 
And um, let's see, we need to know who we are in Christ, and we need to know our position of authority, and that's what the breastplate is all about. Okay, the next thing I'm going to talk about is the sword of the Spirit. Now, this subject is pretty awesome. Ephesians 6, 8 says, The sword of the Spirit is the Word of God praying in the Spirit. Okay, the Word of God is the sword of the Spirit, but you have to be praying. You just can't have it in your Bible. You have to take it out of the holder, out of the belt, and you have to use it. You have to speak it. You get saved by confessing with your mouth and believing with your heart that Jesus is Lord and God raised him from the dead. So everything else in life is received by saying it with your mouth. And you have to say God's Word. God's Word is living and it's powerful. And it's sharper than a double-edged sword. The Word is spirit and life. You see, the things of the Spirit created the things in the natural world, in the physical world. Everything in the physical world was created by spiritual matter, energy. And um, Revelation 19, 13 through 15 says that Jesus' name is the Word of God. So Jesus' name is the Word of God. And out of his mouth comes a two-edged sword. John 6, 63 says the Word is spirit and truth. Um, the sword of the Spirit is saying God's Word out loud. It is what Jesus used when he was tempted by the devil. And that's Matthew 4. Uh, the angels hearken to the voice of the Word. That's Psalms 103, 20. The Word has to be taken out of the belt to be used. The word must be spoken out loud to become an offensive weapon. Uh, read Proverbs 12, 18, and Jude 1, 20. Is praying in the Spirit built you up in the most holy faith? Now, praying in the Spirit is part of your armor. When you pray in the Holy Spirit or pray in tongues, you're building yourself up. You're edifying yourself. You're praying God's perfect will in your family. You're bringing your impurities in you out by them being revealed through the Spirit, Holy Spirit searches God's Spirit and your spirit and sees what's not pleasing and draws it out and pulls it out of you. Praying in the Spirit builds yourself up in your most holy faith. It keeps you in the love of God. Faith doesn't work except if you're walking in the love of God. That it, uh, Not walking in the love of God is a blocker. So the sword of the Spirit is very important and you would use it, for example, with the devil would say, um, You'd start feeling your heart beat faster. You say, I'm having a heart attack. And you start being fearful about having a heart attack. But then you pull out the sword and you say, by the stripes of Jesus, I have been healed. And the word of God says, Second Peter 2.24, 2, uh, Jesus' uh, stripes bore the stripes on the tree that we being, uh, let's see, let me get that scripture. Let me see if I have that here. Um, but it says that by his stripes, we have been healed. So you, tell, you take the sword, you say, I have been healed by the stripes of Jesus. Or you might even quote some more scriptures uh, that come to your mind that have to do with that. I'm ruler and king on this earth, Satan. You have been judged. Um, I'm, you, you know, you have no authority and dominion over me. And you just quote the word. Because the word is alive and active. Now the belt of, the belt of truth is the word of God. John 17:17 17, 17 says that Jesus separates us by his word and that his word is the truth. It's spirit and life. The Word is the basis for everything. The Word created this world. If you look in 1 John, uh, the words were what created this material world. Now, if you don't study your Bible, if you don't pray in the Spirit, if you're not baptized, let me start over. If you're not baptized in the Holy Spirit with evidence of praying in other tongues, it's going to be hard for you to read the Bible and get anything out of it. You'll get the law out of it because anyone can read the Bible and get the law out of it. But when you're baptized with the Holy Spirit and praying in other tongues, you can, God will reveal mysteries to you. You can have understanding of the Word of God because the Holy Spirit is now in you, lighting your path, showing you the way. And that's very important. Um, Hebrews 4.12 says the Word of God is alive. It can change anything. Um, the Word of God sets you free. And the Word of God is the Bible. 